I work for the University of Minnesota Mass Laboratory, and um, I'll be talking a little bit about the Krypton 3D measurement system. Um, several of the NICE facilities have uh, equipment that moves in multiple degrees of freedom, but standard instrumentation, such as LVDTs, string pots, tilt meters, um, they only measure in one or two dimensions. So this can limit the information that is available during the test or after the, after the test, or it can complicate the instrumentation plan in order to get what you want to see. So if you wanted to get a three-dimensional displacement, you'd have to use several string potentiometers that all go to one point, and it's basically a big mess. So one of the technologies that is available is the Krypton 3D measurement system, and it's made by uh, Nikon Metrology. Uh, this is a picture of the, the camera. It's made up of three CCD lenses that um, triangulate the locations of infrared LEDs. And this is a, an example of um, what one of the LEDs looks like. So the two outer cameras calculate the, mainly the Y and Z positions, while the center one focuses mainly on the X. And then together, through um, coordinate triangulation, it can give you the 3D displacement. Um, according to Krypton, it has uh, about 8, 10 thousandths of an inch um, resolution, but so far we have not been able to make that happen. Kind of an overview of how the system works. There is a controller which sends a signal to the strober, which is um, in the upper right, and that's where the LEDs are plugged into, so that gives a signal to the LED to blink and at the same time, it sends a signal to the camera, and that camera will um, capture where the LED position is and then send it back to the controller. Um, there's a, a software that comes with the Krypton that is called K-Assist, which you specify some of your setup um, details, and then you can optimize your settings to get the highest frequency or the highest accuracy. Um, since the camera reads the LEDs sequentially. Um, you kind of have to uh, limit your number of LEDs if you want um, a very high frequency. So for example, if we have three LEDs, um, to get the highest accuracy, the maximum frequency you can read at is 212 hertz. Um, but if that's not as much of an issue as frequency, then you can uh, measure at a maximum of 587 hertz. Um, typically at mass, we use around 40 hertz, but we're doing quasi-static, so we don't need as much of a high frequency, but we could um, measure up to 44 hertz. Uh, here's another software called DMM. This is where the actual measurement um, takes place. This is a view of the screen, what you would see um, during a test. So it gives you the X, Y, and Z positions of every LED. And in the bottom left-hand corner, you can also see if all of your LEDs are visible at one time. And um, they will turn red if the LED isn't visible, and then you can go out and fix it. The data exports as a CSV file, so it can be manipulated in Excel, or um, we like to use MATLAB, too. Uh, the Krypton defines a coordinate system with the cameras at origin, but this isn't always very convenient for data analysis. So there's also a space probe, which is up here in the right-hand corner. Uh, it has nine LEDs on it, which calculate the exact location of this probe tip. So with that, you can go up to your specimen and create your own coordinate system. Um, here's an example of a coordinate system we made for a concrete column. So it just kind of simplifies your data analysis. The field of view is made up um, of the three different field of views of the camera lenses, which results in a pyramidal volume, but um, you'll see that better in a different slide. Uh, Krypton specifies these three distant dependent regions of accuracy, so obviously the closer you are to the camera, the more accurate you're going to be. And um, we've observed an accuracy of about uh, two thousandths of an inch in the first region, and it gets worse as you go out. So here's a better view of that uh, Krypton volume. Uh, this is from the K-Check software, which you can make sure all of your LEDs on your specimen are um, in view before you start taking data. So the LEDs in green um, are fine, but the, the little LED in red is out of view. 
So you would know that you would have to fix that before you start taking data. Um, the following few slides are some examples of how we've used Krypton at mass to um, get different types of data. So this is um, University of Washington braced frame project. And we put the LEDs um, on the gusset plates. And one thing that they were looking at was the, the bend line of the gusset plate when, um, when the braces started buckling. This is the Purdue University concrete columns. Uh, they had them on the column in the top block to verify 3D displacements. Um, George detected a series of CFTs and they used the, the LEDs to verify displacements and to, to see when the onset of local buckling was at the base of the column. So University of Minnesota owns a Krypton. University at Buffalo uses it and um, at Illinois. And I heard a rumor that NISCOM is actually going to buy um, a fourth camera to be shared among the sites. Uh, one of the things we do at Minnesota is make a model of the specimen before, um, before we build it in the planning stages so that we can insert the Krypton val the volume into um, the model to make sure that whatever the researcher wants to see during the test will, will be visible and that once we start moving that um, that that view isn't going to go out of range. Um, one new thing that we're working on is streaming the uh, data to RDV. So we had a REU student this past summer who developed the panel for us. And here's kind of an example of what it's going to look like. Um, these LEDs in green are the lit up points of uh, the Brace Frame project. And kind of a better view of a, a video of what this would look like. This is just a test setup that we made. And so we have six LEDs um, on this little track on the left. Two of them are stationary and four of them are moving. So on this, hand, or this side, you can see how the LEDs are moving and that's in three-dimensional space. So when uh, one of the LEDs goes out of range, like we have that coffee cup in front of one of them, the LED will turn red, and when it comes back into view, you can see it moving. So this is something that we want to keep working on, and then hopefully share with the rest of the NIST sites soon. So I guess we don't really have time for questions, but I'll be around afterward. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel.